Hey Calvary Kids, I'm Mr. Derek. And I'm Miss Kylie, and we are so happy you decided to join us for Kids Church today. Last week, we learned that Pharaoh was not willing to let the Israelites go. Do you guys remember how many plagues that God sent before Pharaoh finally let the people go? Yes, 10. We talked about how Moses and his brother Aaron were probably frustrated and confused when this happened. They didn't scream and throw a temper tantrum. Instead, they cried out to God. And this is what we are supposed to do when we're upset. God loves to hear from us. He also loves when we praise him. So let's jump up on our feet and worship our king. Your perfect love is rising 
thank you guys so much for singing with us. It is so great for us to sing praises to our God. So I am sorry to disappoint you all, but I didn't have a clue for you today. I really wanted to take us all on a field trip to the ocean, but apparently that's not allowed. So I've come empty handed. Maybe we can pretend we're at the ocean. Definitely not the same, but fine. We will just imagine our clue today. It is a big body of water. But I also think we should go check in with Caroline and see what fun clue she has for us. What's up everybody? My name is Caroline and this is Rewind. You guys know the drill by now. Rewind is a show where we compile the best videos that YouTube has to offer and show them to you, our loyal viewers, because we love you. Now let's get started. Do you guys like scary movies? I absolutely hate them, but for some reason, I love watching people getting pranked on the internet. And that brings me to the title of today's game. Are you scared yet? I will subject myself to five of the best prank videos online and rate them on the scared meter You know what's up, a one is not so scary and a five is super scary that I just peed myself. Make sense? Let's do it. Okay, let's take it from the top. Video number one. Oh my goodness, this poor little boy. That bear just moved. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at that slow motion. That little kid's face was so intense. But I don't think a stuffed bear would scare me that much. So I'm going to have to give it a two on a scared meter What? You guys think I get scared easily? No, not at all. I'm sticking to my original score of two. All right, next video. Video number two. He had no idea that was coming. Look at his reaction in slow motion. Did someone call my name? <laughs> These videos are funny, but I really don't think I would be that scared if that happened to me. Come on, she just caught him off guard. Okay, fine, maybe I got a little scared. I'm gonna have to give it a two on the scared meter as well. That wasn't fair though. I have our next video. Oh no. Oh my gosh. No way. He's climbing on top of the bugs. Oh my gosh. <laughs> he just climbed on top of that thing. <laughs> he went into the freezer. That's how freaked out he was. Oh no. Oh no. No, 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 no. See, now that is actually something to be scared about. Man, I think I'm gonna have to give that one a four on the scared of later. Video number four. Oh no. Oh my goodness, poor little boy. He just went straight to the ground. Okay, so let me get this straight. A grandpa hid in his house with a fake sword with the lights off to scare his grandson? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. I'm gonna have to give that one a three. I better be nice to my grandpa. All right, next video, video number five. everyone watching what is going on oh my gosh. i had no idea i was not paying attention to that bush at all oh these people have no idea what's about to happen <laughs> that would have been me for sure <laughs> that was by far the scariest thing i've seen all day i'm gonna have to give that a five on a scared of you see i do think things are scary see i'm not the only one who Haha, ha, so funny, you guys got me. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Did that help you figure out what story we are going to be learning about today? I'm going to be honest and tell you that I really have no idea what we're talking about. Caroline just had a bunch of people getting pranked and scared and don't get me wrong, I think it's super funny to watch. I'm just a little confused about how this has anything to do with Moses. Okay, it is funny to watch people get scared, but it isn't funny for us when we get scared, is it? No. I mean, 
I definitely don't like to be scared. And sometimes things in life are scary. And if I'm being honest, that really is not fun at all. In our Bible story today, we are going to learn about a time when Moses was fearful. Listen really closely and try to figure out what the Israelites and Moses were afraid of. Okay, I'm excited to hear this part of Moses' story. So, let's grab our Bibles and turn to Exodus 4 and get ready to learn more about the incredible plan that God had for Moses' life. Moses and the Red Sea. This is Moses, hey. who was an Israelite born in Egypt in a time when Israelite boys were not supposed to live. Wait, huh? Moses, however, grew up in the palace of the Pharaoh, the very man who was enslaving the Israelite people. When Moses grew up, he made a big mistake uh -oh. and fled Egypt uh -oh. to live with the Midianites. Uh. But God called Moses back to Egypt ah. to deliver his people with the help of his brother Aaron. Whew. The Pharaoh did not want to let God's people go, and God showed his power throughout all Egypt by sending plagues. Even with all the suffering, Pharaoh's heart stayed hard and he would not let the people go. On the night of the last plague, Pharaoh woke up huh? and heard a great cry in Egypt. Oh, for there was not a house in Egypt where someone was not dead. Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and told him to be gone with the Israelites. So the Israelites immediately left Egypt and made their way for the promised land, taking with them many riches from Egypt. They took Joseph's bones as they had promised him many years before. God led them by a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. God told Moses to have the people camp along the shore of the Red Sea. Okay, got it. We're stopping here. God told Moses that the Egyptians would come after them but that God would show his glory and power through this. Pharaoh changed his mind and readied his army to take back the Israelites. The Egyptians found the Israelites camped along the shore of the sea. As Pharaoh and his armies came close, the Israelites panicked. They cried out to God and asked Moses, why did you bring us out here to die in the wilderness? But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Then God said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to get moving. All right. As night came, the pillar of cloud became fire and it went between the Israelites and the Egyptians. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea and God opened a path through the water with a strong wind. Whoa. The wind blew all that night, turning the seabed into dry land. Come on, are you? So the people of Israel walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground with walls of water on each side. Then the Egyptians chased the Israelites into the middle of the sea. But just before dawn, God looked down on the Egyptian army from the pillar of fire and cloud, and he threw their forces into total confusion. Let's get out of here, away from these Israelites. The Egyptians shouted, the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. When all the Israelites had reached the other side, God said to Moses, Raise your hand over the sea again. Who got it? Moses raised his hand over the sea and the water rushed back into its usual place. The Egyptians tried to escape, but God swept them into the sea. That is how God rescued Israel from the hand of the Egyptians that day. When the people of Israel saw the mighty power that God had shown against the Egyptians, they were amazed. They put their faith in God and in his servant, Moses. Wow, this is incredible. I would have been terrified if I was the Israelites. 
They were finally set free from Pharaoh, and they were able to leave and stop living in slavery, but then Pharaoh changed his mind and decided that he wanted his army to chase after them. I am sure they also felt helpless when they got to the Red Sea and turned around and saw Pharaoh's army. They were trapped and probably terrified and maybe even hopeless. But we know that this isn't the end of the story. What did God do? Yes, he parted the waters so that they could walk through on dry land. This is absolutely incredible and shows how powerful our God really is. Well, I think we should go back to Caroline and learn even more about how God was with Moses and how he is with us all the time. The Bible is full of stories that teach us how to respond when we're scared. Today, we're learning about when Moses led the Israelites out of slavery. The Israelites, God's chosen people, were enslaved by Pharaoh, the leader of Egypt. After God demonstrated his incredible power with 10 plagues, Pharaoh finally decided to let the Israelites leave Egypt. But before long, Pharaoh changed his mind. He gathered all of his horses and chariots and soldiers, and he chased after the Israelites. Around that time, Moses and everyone else arrived at the Red Sea. In the distance, they could see Pharaoh's army growing closer. They were trapped. The Israelites must have been terrified, but God was with them. He told Moses to raise his staff, and when he did that, God sent a strong wind that parted the water of the Red Sea, creating a path for the Israelites to cross. Once they made it to the other side, Moses once again raised his staff over his head and the waters of the Red Sea came crashing down on the Egyptian army. I don't know about you guys, but I would have been terrified if I saw the Egyptians coming. I probably would have been even more scared crossing the Red Sea with huge waves of water ready to crash down it any moment. But when it came down to it, the Israelites had faith in God in that moment. They were brave when it mattered most. Sometimes this kind of bravery can seem impossible to have ourselves. I get scared all the time over things that are so much smaller than what the Israelites encountered. It can be easy to see the Israelites as some people in a story who were totally different than us. But even if they lived in a very different time and place than us, we share one very important thing in common. We worship the same God. He cares for us just as much as he cared about the Israelites, and he takes our fears just as seriously. When we get scared, it's important to remind ourselves that God loves us. On top of all the times that God has provided for us in our lives, we also have a whole Bible full of stories of times when God helped his people in moments of need. God wasn't surprised when the Pharaoh changed his mind and sent his army after the Israelites. This is God we're talking about. He had a whole plan right from the very beginning, including having the Israelites cross the Red Sea. But Moses and the Israelites didn't know God's plan. Moses had to go to God in prayer when he was scared, and the Israelites had to trust God as his plan was revealed to them. The next time you feel scared about anything, and I mean anything, remember that you can go to God with your fears. It's okay to be afraid. No fear is too small for God, but it's important that we share our fears with God in prayer. This will help us to trust in God more, and the more we trust in Him, the less afraid we'll be as we go through life. All right, guys, we're just about done here. We'll catch you back here next week for another episode of Rewind. The Israelites had faith in God, and because of that, were brave when it mattered most. Instead of being scared and worried, they trusted that God was going to see them through. When they saw the mighty miracle that God had done in parting the Red Sea, they trusted that God was going to be with them all the time. Just like Moses and the Israelites, God is always with us too. Sometimes scary things might happen, but we can look back and remember all the miracles that God has done in our lives. Knowing that God is with us through every situation can help us be brave. Remember, God loves us so much and he promises that he will never leave our side. So, friends, the next time you feel scared about anything, we can remember to go to God with our fears. Remember, he loves to hear from us. He will always be there for us. Here are your discussion questions for this week. If you want, you can pause the video right now and take some time to talk through these questions with your parents or another family member. If not, don't worry. We'll put them up again at the end of the video so you can use them later. And now, let's sing another song together.
say hey every day i'll choose jesus i will follow you let everything i do honor you every day i'll trust and obey every word you say cause i know I can't get over how amazing it would have been to see God part the Red Sea and allow the Israelites to walk through it on dry ground. That really is just showing us that God has an incredible plan for us. Friends, remember, being scared is okay, but we can fight our fear with the knowledge that God is with us and never leaving our side. I hope you guys have been enjoying learning about Moses. I have some sort of sad news though. Next week is our last week to learn about Moses. But remember, if you really like these stories, you can read them over and over again in your Bible. We hope you have a great week and we can't wait to see you again next week. Bye.